quickly before we jump into the video, I want to let you guys know about something that is live in World War II right now that I think you should totally take advantage of. With the most recent update for World War II giving us the now last week of Winter Siege and all of multiplayer, you can go over to Major Howard, check out new orders, and Butcher has new contracts as well. But Major Howard has one today that is active that is a contract for completing 30 games in multiplayer, but what you get out of it is two Winter Bribes. So it's not just Winter Supply Drops in which you only get one Winter item, you end up getting three Winter Bribes that are supposedly dupe protected. Once again, we talked about that potentially being bugged, but three guaranteed items from the Winter Siege collections you can get for just completing 30 matches. Now, whether or not this is something that will be around for the rest of the duration of this that you can activate at any time as a daily order, I don't know, but I'd just say try and activate it now so you have the option to take advantage of it and it might not disappear on you. But that said, I want to let you guys know about this before we got into the video, but with that said, let's jump right into it. Before World War II launched, we had a ton of speculation about stuff that would be coming within the game, whether that be pertaining to campaign or multiplayer, and probably a large majority, honestly, was talking about multiplayer. A lot of speculation circulated around what sort of stuff would be in the game, because World War II, no doubt, is one of the most in-depth conflicts in entire human history, and it's something that there is so much to pull from that limiting yourself to presumably just game contents is something that you could probably never win, because there's always going to be something you could throw in to add on to more. So, unless you end up having a complete class loadouts with options in the hundreds, if not thousands of things you could use, it's something that you're probably always going to be on the short end of that stick in which you could always have more to put in there. But of course, without overwhelming the average player, that's something that it's just brought down to what we have now. Now, of course, there's a lot of things that people were necessarily upset that weren't in the game. There are some classics like what we had right now, the Gewehr 43. Though it's in the game now, it did not launch with the game. So it was something that people were like, well, why isn't that in there? And there's probably a dozen things you could say that are probably staples to the era that you're like, well, why did it not make the first build of the game at launch? And that's where the idea and topic of discussion of DLC comes into play, because there's a lot of stuff that potentially could come. So today, I want to talk to you guys about something that was prompted by one of my subscribers in a live stream yesterday that we did during my Rhodes 100,000 live stream, which firstly, by the way, thank you guys so much for that. We hit it yesterday, we got sub purged, and then we hit it again today. So we hit 100,000 subscribers twice, but I seriously can't thank you guys enough for the support. But that said, the comment in question dealt with, will we be getting anything for the Pacific Front, for the Pacific Theater of World War II in terms of DLC? And that got me to thinking because it potentially could happen, but it also potentially could not. So all of this today is going to be just discussion, all theory, nothing is in any way, shape, or form confirmed. So take it with a grain of salt, it's just discussion and what potentially could happen and just an educated guess. Now personally, I think there is a bunch of different ways this could end up spinning, that of course it could be possible, but it also could be impossible. First, let's start with what we know, which kind of points towards it not being possible. That is something in which Sledgehammer and Condry have publicly hit on this note, in which the story is on the European theater. That's where our entire campaign is based, that's where 99% of our stuff for multiplayer even comes into play, is the European theater from World War II. So why break the mold and go elsewhere? That's something that I think is probably the biggest deterrent for the idea of this ever happening. It's been pretty much solidified that this would not be something that is moved outside of the European theater, but stranger things could happen. But that said, there's also potentially reasons that it could happen. One of the biggest ones, firstly, in my mind, is the fact that Sledgehammer's probably going to be doing this World War II as a one-off. And I don't mean that in the sense that the title is going to never have a sequel or follow-up. Personally, I haven't played the campaign yet, so I don't even know if they could do a follow-up with this or not. I'm sure they could, even if it ended up wrapping up and tying every loose end up. But nonetheless, the theories for the games following this year are not necessarily looking like they're going to be coming back to a World War II game. This might have been a fan service type of deal or something in which Activision wanted to take advantage of the volatile market that is World War II genre games in the resurgence here in pop culture and everything like that. And potentially this is going to be the only game in the next three years that is World War II. I'm not saying that we won't ever return after this, but right now indications for Treyarch's next title almost seem like indications for a near past or near future or present day title, or potentially I guess there are those theories in which it's way far off once again, but nothing really pointing back to the idea that we're going to be seeing anything going back to World War II. No leaks like that or anything. And Infinity Ward, personally to me, while I have no idea what they're going to do, 
I think the only logical thing would be to tie in Modern Warfare in some way, shape, or form, whether that be a Modern Warfare 4 where you go after the Shadow Company and try and hunt down the rest of the organization after you've already taken care of Shepard and Makarov, well, that's something that's possible, or maybe we get a prequel storyline, I just don't think that Infinity Ward will be returning to World War II. So that idea that once again, it might be a one-off, so why kind of restrict it in that area? If this is going to be the only World War II title in upcoming years, then why only have it focused on the Axis vs. Allies in the sense of only the European theater? You could potentially bring over stuff from the Pacific Theater, the Pacific Front, because there were a lot of stuff that did happen over there as well. You have some very key iconic locations that you could use as maps, you have iconic weaponry, and that actually leads me into the next topic that I want to bring up, because weaponry, while right now there's only a couple of things that are from the Soviet Union, that's the farthest east outside of the Type 100, we can't forget about that because that is of Japanese make and origin, but the Type 100 is the farthest east that we go into the Pacific Front, the only thing we have really on that, then everything else is the Soviet Union and the PPSH and the SVT-40, those are of Soviet make and origin, but when you take a look at stuff that's in the game code, stuff that was dug up during the beta, and stuff that already has had things come out of this to the full game, so the leak is legit and credible, there were weapons that included the Arasaka and the Type 5, both weapons that are of, you guessed it, Japanese origin. Granted, once again, you may be able to argue the fact that these are weapons that are staples of that time frame and era, and that a game without them wouldn't truly be a World War II game, but there are two weapons which in my mind would be perfect to drop at the same point in time as other content, so it might fit in perfectly. And again, one of the things that it seems like with the already established DLC 1 trailer is that they're trying to essentially portray an area with each of these. So in the trailer, we end up seeing this conquest on the map in which we see our allies and Axis powers form together and show their positions in the map and their strongholds, and that's where these locations are within DLC 1. Now, I think that'd be pretty sweet if we ended up getting another trailer and it shows the map once again, but shifted over to the Pacific Fronts and the Pacific Theater. Now again, that is really just spitballing. There is no way to know if this would ever happen other than just pure speculation. But that said, even if this sort of stuff doesn't come, there's still a lot of stuff on the table DLC-wise that we could potentially see. And even if we drop the idea of the Pacific Theater, that's something that we still have all of these on the table. One of which, at the very easiest and core of this, is DLC weapons in which we've already detailed that there's the Gewehr 43, the Type 5, the Volkstrom Gewehr, the Beretta 38, the Sten, the Beretta 30, the M1919, the MG81, the Arasaka, the Winchester 94, the Enfield number 2, the Walther P38, the Rex Revolver, the Ice Pick, the Combat Knife, and the Trench Knife. All of those were in the game code before the launch of the game in the beta code, and we've already seen a handful of those come in, that being the Trench Knife, the Ice Pick, the Sten, the Gewehr 43, and the Beretta 30, and as we know, that was called the GPMG. There's other basic training which did not make it over into the full game, some stuff that was from the alpha and the very early beta versions, some of the stuff that we maybe even saw at E3 like that, but also stuff that never really even made its way into the game, stuff that, while I'm not necessarily thinking that it would be dropped out of the blue here or something like that, it's something that some of these could actually be used to establish what is the next huge thing that is in the game code, and we've yet to see. That being a sixth division within World War II. Now, this is something that might seem crazy, but we've actually seen it before. That being the air quote 10th specialist within Black Ops 3. That being Blackjack, of course, somebody that you have to activate via contracts within the game and is only available for limited time use, but there is a sixth division called Cavalry within the game that has not been seen just yet. And while this might be something that is very similar to a DLC 5 type meme, it's something that we've seen before and would be something Something that potentially could work out, but it also could be something that was just cut, like other basic trainings. But that said, if this were to come, I'd probably expect it to come in around the June or July period that almost mirrors the release of that of Blackjack and the contract system within Black Ops 3, something that gives more hype to that air quote dead period in the year in which there's not much content, it's in between DLC content packs, and it's something that players are just looking for something to give them a reason to keep playing the game. Instead of going off to some other game, that is something that could totally be thrown in there and maybe we see it at that point and maybe some of these cut basic trainings pick and choose a little bit of how this cavalry division works. Maybe it's a little bit of everything that we see across the board with the five divisions, but maybe one specific piece 
for each of those put into one, or maybe you can custom tailor your own. Who knows? I think that'd be something very cool, but as for rounding back up, there is no shortage of DLC that could potentially happen within World War II. There is so much content, not only in the realms of the universe of World War II, but also the realms of just the game code and what's actually in the files in the game build that is just below what the public sees. So there's definitely a lot of stuff that we can take a look at and hope for in the near future. And that said, I think I'm going to turn it over to you guys. Do you want to see some stuff on the Pacific Theater? Do you guys want to see a sixth division added in? into World War II, whatever it may be, let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. There's no right or wrong answer, I just want to open up a little bit of a discussion here for this one. So with that said, feel free to let me know your thoughts, but that's where we're going to wrap it up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure you drop a like down below, and of course if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe to stay up to date with everything we have here regarding Call of Duty World War II. We just hit 100,000 subscribers earlier today for the second time, so truly dudes, thank you so much for all that you have done for me over the years, for all the support that you guys give day in and day out on the videos, the streams, the channel all of it thank you guys all so much for everything truly do appreciate it but that said if you guys are interested in anything regarding best tips tricks news class setups information all that good stuff we got you covered here up on the channel and finally if you guys want to follow me over on twitter that's the best place to get connected with me outside of youtube practically live on twitter so if you guys want to strike up a conversation ask me a question whatever it may be link is down there in the description below but all that said now out of the way hope you guys have a fantastic day thanks so much for watching my name is espresso i'll see you guys later take care and peace